Hi everyone. Okay. Today I had a, a private client <clears throat> and we painted poppies and I thought that was kind of fun. So I thought I would uh, go ahead and just paint another poppy here. I had not realized it's been some time since I painted them. I used to paint these a lot because I lived near Carlsbad and there was a lot of them there. So thought I'd revisit that. This is kind of the look I'm going for on the bottom here. And I thought what would be fun is I'm going to use these uh, metallics. I've had them for some time. They're metallics by Art Philosophy. So I pulled them out and uh, thought we could play with those a little bit. All right. So the poppies I'm going to do are going to be this pinky color, um, but as you can see, it's metallic. I think they're quite pretty. Normally what I found with metallics is they're thick and they don't move and blend and, and flow, so we'll see how this goes. I'm using uh, just an inexpensive student grade, 140 pound uh, cold pressed paper, and I'm going to use a couple brushes. I'm going to use, actually I just picked up this Grumbacher it's a round eight and then for the little tiny um, black stamens in the middle i'm going to use this little tiny zero uh, degato brush and again i'm using these art philosophy i found in all of my paints i can link them for you if you want if they have them on amazon i'll do that for you okay so let's get started i'm going to use part of the side of my brush because I like that poppy has a very round fat leaf uh, petal and so I tend to use some of my the side of my brush and then as I get to the tip I um, get much thinner okay so let's go ahead and get started here let's see um okay I'm going to use this pinky color, and you know what? I don't see the colored name. They probably gave it to me at some time, but I've had these so long. I'll, I can maybe look that up for you and, and put the colors. I will list this palette if they have it on Amazon. Okay, so I'm going to hold my brush up near the ferrule so I have a little bit of control here, and being that these paints are a little bit different, um, I did add some water. I'm going to try and keep it that tea-like consistency. These paints are really pretty. And let's do our first petal. So using kind of the side of my brush and then creating that back petal, just like that. I'm going to put this here as a reference for me. Like that. And then doing another side petal here, bringing everything back to the center. So I use this tip of my brush to uh, get those little lines there. And then I'm going to use a point press point and what that does is it kind of um, gives the effect of this petal coming out in front now this is where I'm not sure about these paints so let's just see what happens normally I would dab in some darker colors here what I found in the past using uh, metallics it didn't spread a lot which is kind of what I'm seeing right now as well it just didn't seem to flow as much as um, regular watercolors, probably because they're a little bit more, um, have more uh, like a sediment in them, I'm assuming. That's just kind of my logic behind that. Okay, let's go on to my second one. I think I'll do one um, kind of like facing downwards. So using the tip and then it's really just going to be like a upside down version of what I'm already creating something like that and then get a little bit more of this paint 
these petals kind of hanging downwards in the front. I really more wanted to make them shorter than these back ones. So I think I'll go over that a little bit like that. So it's kind of hanging downwards like this. And then I'm going to do the, the stem coming down like this. Um, let's see, let's make another one right here, just dipping into my water. I am creating this tea-like consistency, but I'm noticing it's pretty light, so you could almost use more of a milk consistency. And then let's do one right here. Bringing them all kind of to the center like this. So I'm always drawing, keeping that center point and all my petals are kind of facing inwards. Something like that. Um, there we go. Bringing them all inwards. And then let's do this petal kind of coming out like so. Yeah. That works. Okay, so I am finding what I've found in the past that um, the metallics don't quite flow as much, but I like them. They're actually quite fun. I might do some more paintings with these. They're um, kind of cool. And then let's do one right here, almost facing sideways. Like that. Something like that. Now the fun part, let's go in and see how it blends when I add in the green, which this palette was not real thrilled about the green that they have. Um, I like a little bit darker green. So maybe I'll mix it with a little bit of their black, maybe even some gold, let's see what that does. Hmm, kind of pretty. It's definitely getting darker, which is what I want. So I just mixed uh, they're green, which is like a kind of a seafoam green. And then I mixed in a little bit of gold to warm it up and a tiny bit of this gray. And then let's create some stems here. So kind of as I suspected, it's not really blending, but that's okay. This is wet, but it doesn't really flow like if I was using regular watercolors. That may just be this brand. It may just be me. I don't know, but that's what I'm finding. So there's that. Now I'm going to make a couple little, um, I love, one of the things I love about poppies is they have these really fun little pods that come out. I think they're so fun how they point downwards. So using the tip of my brush, just created that. And then let's maybe do, I don't wanna get too bunched up here. Maybe do um, another one right here. There we go. And some leaves, which uh, really, these flowers kind of, they always remind me of parsley. They have these kind of scraggly type leaves, something like that. Maybe do another one here. A lot of times I just do a regular old leaf. Um, So just using the point and kind of creating these jaggedy lines. I wish I could get that color deeper green, but that's okay. It's fine. Um, and I'm leaving a little bit of gap between those, as you can see. So I'm just dabbing here, really. 
something like that. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is um, what to me really resembles the poppy is when I go in and I'm going to use this. I'm going to mix some of the pale yellow. And some of the gold. And as you can see, it's kind of thicker consistency. You'll have to play with these yourself and see. They're really quite fun, but they're definitely a little bit thicker. And let's just go in and what's kind of interesting is you don't have to wait for it to dry as long because the paint doesn't flow together. So, and I'll leave that one like that. And then let's just go in with, I found this in my kit, Alex. I don't even know what that brand is. I have so many brushes. Here's, this came in that Degato set I have though, so I think I'll use that. Now, if you can't get this really fine line with a rigger or a zero round brush, you'd be free to use a pen or something. You can always do that as well. So let me just pick up some of this. It's actually looks like a gray to me which is all the more reason why I might use a pin so it was blacker because to me that's very characteristic and recognizable in a uh, poppy but let's see what we can do here um, I hope that is a small enough okay that I'm gonna get a different brush because that tip doesn't have a real fine line. So let's try this. I found this one too. Let's see, this is a, gosh, you guys, I don't even know what that is. I'll list it. I'll look in Amazon, see if they have it, but look at how fine that is. So I really like that little fine tip. Remembering those tips you really want to protect so that they stay pointy like that. And then Maybe tip off, just make sure I don't have water, too much water, because this needs to be a really fine line. And then I'm just gonna go in and make some of these lines. To me, you do this, and even if your poppy isn't perfect, it's gonna be recognizable. Now, of course, I chose to do iridescence here, but Still, I think that helps make it recognizable. And then I think the last thing I might do is just add in a little color at the tip of those rosebuds. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of my pink paint. I am noticing this paint dries quite quickly, which can be a good thing. And I'm just going to Kind of tap in there. There we go. Okay. So I think that's pretty much done, you guys. I just really wanted to get on here and kind of play with these paints and see what the deal is with them. I've had them in my collection for a while. Let's see if we can do my favorite technique, that push and pull. A little bit. It just, the paint doesn't quite move as well as it does with regular watercolors. So that's, I think, really the biggest difference I'm seeing. But what I am loving is this beautiful um, shine and shimmer. So that's really fun. So there you go. Um, I will list this brush. It's called, it's probably just an off-brand and probably why I don't ever grab it, but it worked fine here, Transon. I'll look it up on um, uh, Amazon for you. And then I actually did the first petals with this Grumbacher brush. It's a uh, round number eight, and that, that was fine. And I think that's it. And I used this Art Philosophy, uh, their metallic accents, which was really fun. I'll use it again, maybe do another tutorial on it, because I think peonies would be really pretty with that. And just let me know if you have any questions. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.